Welcome to the Chillingly Board Podcast, where we run a many a tabletop RPGs. For today, we are playing Werewolf the Apocalypse, Dark Moon Rising. So get a cup of your favorite hot beverage, whether it be a cup of coffee or tea, and chill out, prop your feet up, and get comfy, because it's about to get rowdy. Now, warning. Werewolf deals with dark themes and subjects along with a grotesque amount of body horror, violence, and more, because this is the world of darkness system after all. Now, remember, you don't have to scare or hurt yourself for the entertainment that is provided. There is plenty of obscene and horrific stuff that does happen. This will be your one and only warning. Also, remember, we're just actors and we are doing our best to give you a great experience, so please, any recommendations or anything to help would be amazing, because this is, of course, for you. So let's get into it. Welcome to L.A. So that little nest has been dealt with. Well, that's a damn good thing for sure, the corruption that thing had caused. The cesspits, mortals and wolves alike being changed into vicious mongrels, licking up spilled blood and flesh. Nothing could have them come back to a better state than the twisted form they were, they are in now. So our wolves did what they do best, burn, maim, and kill whatever is in the fucking den. The worm, the black spiral, by Gaia, what does this all come to? Leah, or Roxy, our other wolf, has been sent into trauma with her face being chewed and maimed, burned from viscous acid, mouth sucking and shredding her sinew from her bone. Then the warmth of a mother's touch. Or Jackson's, but by God, thank the spirit, she had made it. Though, how much more can she take? That is truly unsure. There is so much left to handle. Our wolves are not out of the deep end yet. If only they knew what was watching over them, and the brutal nature of what was coming. Something dark is rising. Extinction is on its way. Our wolves must fight until the very end. I am Steve, the Storyteller. And just for this episode alone, and maybe more in the future, I am welcomed by only one of our friends this time. Go, go ahead and say hi. hi -o. And that would be... It is me. Anthony, or Jackson, or whatever the fuck I'm playing currently. Okay, yeah, that's being and kept in. I fucking love that. <laughs> So, we're not immediately going into the episode that's perhaps planned, because we do not have our dear... Considering the other players are missing at this point in time, yes. we are doing a salute of sorts. You could call it of that, just yes. Me. Of just Jack. Me and our dear storyteller, where I screw with him continuously. If you guys just hear me out... This is not going to be as professional, or I'm hoping it is, but with just the two of us, it, it'll it be interesting, to say the least. So, that is an understatement. Okay, well, our dear Jackson, it's been a while since everything has happened it it's been about a few days after roxy and you guys came out of that den the brutal viciousness that happened in there is something you wish to be forgotten and you know damn well she wishes it to be forgotten she, roxy oh i know this turn roxy doesn't seem to be doing so well lately and um, before what you're sure is your next op as things have been getting tense around here and even you and Jamal have really been feeling it lately, but Roxy hasn't come out at all in these last few days. Jamal says she's been sick of sorts, but you know a little bit better than that. You've dealt with trauma before. Well, trauma is a very heavy, heavy thing. Especially after what happened to Roxy, her arm being bit off. She's a hothead, yeah, for sure. But when you get kicked so low, 
there's only so far that you're willing to keep going. She's in a place of, well, let's say she doesn't want to keep going anymore. You think it might be best to go see her? Yes. Okay. Um, her den is close. <laughs> yes. Um, her den is kind of close to yours. Um, it's a little while away, maybe about a quarter of a mile. You could run it easily. And I'm guessing so you do. Okay. Run it? Yes. Yeah. Probably. You make it, you go outside of the den, and you can smell, hmm, probably some incense or a candle of some sort. You can hear the crackling of a fire. Um, this is, like, a legitimate den, by the way. Like, you guys are out in the middle of nowhere, and you guys are, I think, both lupus. So, going near the city is not your thing. And staying out in the wilds is a lot more comfortable. Okay. Alrighty. You may take it from here. Tell me what you do. Um, probably gonna pick up, like, a loose stone or whatever. Yeah, sure. And knock on the side of the den with it. She looks like... Yeah. Um, you kind of hear a half-baked, very exhausted, hello. It's obviously Roxy. Hey, uh, Roxy, it's Jackson. You mind if I come in? Oh, yeah. Come in. Glad it's you. And so I shall. Um, you see her sitting next to the fire. A large blanket put around her, a way too large hoodie for her, like extra large. She's she's actually only like five four probably, so it's it it's huge. But it looks relatively comfy. Her brown hair her there, there, there. I'm losing my words, my my apologies. It's been a while since I've done storytelling. So um Hazel chestnut brown hair put into the back of a ponytail. Her face looks a little bit somber, but she just continues to watch the fire and doesn't really look towards you in any way, shape, or form, but she does speak up. You know, in all honesty, I'm glad it's you, because Jamal was getting on my fucking nerves, and yeah. So was everybody else in our entire fucking pack. Why is that? They're all just a bunch of assholes, in all honesty. Look look around. All they do is fucking fight. It's politics around here. It's towards, what, the end of our days? We could all fucking die, and all they're worried about is what? Power? We're starting to become like the fucking blood lickers in town the stupid fucking leeches <clears throat> and with my nightmares and everything did I just say that? fuck it just doesn't help I'm high strung I'm panicking I'm anxious and I fucking hate it I truly fucking hate it I'm not what one for politics myself. I prefer <clears throat> the quiet of solitude. I honestly do too. It's when there's confrontation like that from the pack I'm supposed to feel safety from. Well, let's just put it this way. I don't feel safe anymore with our own fucking pack. It's just 
fighting constantly. Marcus and... God, I can't ever f- fucking remember the one girl's name. Who is it? Vivian. Vivian and Marcus. All they do is ever fucking fight. Sorry. It's just... It doesn't help. <clears throat> no. Probably wouldn't. I don't think it helps anybody. It really Except for themselves, honestly. Yeah. It really doesn't, though. I mean... What are we supposed to do? Really, what are we supposed to do? After that shit? With, I don't know. About it all, maybe? <clears throat> I prefer ignoring them and let them deal with their own shit and then doing what needs to be done. That's true. No, I don't know if I have even the capabilities to do what needs to be done anymore. I feel scared, Jackson. I'm not going to even lie about it. It's... After what happened last time, I... I'm in legitimate fear. I feel like that thing, whatever was in that girl's body, is going to come to me at night and rip me apart. Not only that, it feels like I'm, and you're probably going to call me crazy for this, but I'm having visions. What like, kind of visions? The entire sky goes black, and the moon goes red, and this thing, it's almost like... A leviathan of sorts. It, out in the ocean. Thunder and storms. And it's the most unnerving dread I have ever felt. I wake up in cold sweat and a panic. <clears throat> I don't even know why I'm telling you this. I didn't tell anybody else. Well, I don't know why you're telling me this. I do know. Somewhat, anyways. I do know. Fuck, I can't remember what I was going to say now. <laughs> um. <coughs> oh, yeah. I do know that fear is what keeps me going. Fear of the unknown. The fear of what might happen if we didn't do what we do. Hmm. Well, I can't say that I have that I understand what you're going through. That is. Well, I mean, I. It's just nice for somebody to listen, I guess. So thank you for that. I'm good at listening. Not much talking, though. Just a sec. My bad. I was writing something down. Notes. <clears throat> Say that again. I'm good at listening. Not much good at talking. Yeah, I feel that. I mean, I think every time I've talked to anybody in this pack, it's always been me stomping off or throwing something or or them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I know the feeling. I do. Most people don't really understand how to listen without yeah, messing things up. That's true. Because everybody likes putting their own opinions to stuff. Jackson, I, I have a question for you. If can, can you do me a favor? Sure. I'm... I don't know. I turned 18, 19 a while ago. I can't even remember. That's when they took me in. I had how many years? Fuck it. Look. I haven't had a cigarette since I was like 16. And I haven't drank whiskey for a very long time. Now, instead of me crying myself to fucking sleep tonight, I'd rather have an entire bottle or two of whiskey. 
Now the problem, <laughs> the problem is, is I'm a little bit of a scared bitch lately, and I don't want to go into town. I don't even want to leave here, much less go into that sprawling cesspit of fucking... <sighs> yeah. But I need a drink. I'll probably go for... <clears throat> some myself. It'd be nice to have the company. Yeah, it'll definitely be a pleasant change. Cool. Cool. I don't have cash on me. I'll pay you back, though. You don't have to worry about that. This'll be fun. Cool. I'm gonna rest for a little while. Uh, I'll see ya? <laughs> I shall return with... <laughs> The fun. The fun. Booze! Alright. Booze and cigarettes. Um. Okay. So, how would you like to get cigarettes and alcohol? Are you just gonna go straight down to, like, the 7 Eleven or, like, like, the closest one in town? It might like, be easier. I don't really think my character has any cash on him uh, i'd say like you probably at least have like 25 bucks on you i just say if i did it's not written down anywhere on here no you probably are broke as fuck but you have some money i'm all for robbing a liquor store oh shit how, how old is jackson uh 22 he's 22 okay Roxy's, oh fuck, that's that's awesome. Okay, so you are the legal age to drink. You don't? Do you? Do you? Would you have an ID? When when were you? I assume not. I, probably. Oh fuck, that's even better. Um, okay, cool. <coughs> Start making. What's better, the fact that I might have one or might not? We don't know. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say you have a. One from like as soon as you turn 21, but like it's shoddy at best. And it's a fake, ID yeah, it's a f it's yeah, it's accurate. It's a fake ID, I though. Get it from yeah, okay, I'm it's a little tore up. You don't ever carry it on you, you don't drink often, so. Like, you probably have your wallet near, like, a wall half the time, and you're, like, sleeping in it. It's it's a little tore up. Let's put it that way. So you start making your way into town. And... <sighs> dipping into alleyways, kind of... You go for the shittier part of L.A., like, the outskirts, the very shittier part... Just so, like, no one asks questions, no one gives a shit, and no trouble happens. No one's really going to ask you. I'm curious, what are you wearing into town? The only clothes I own. Which would be? <coughs> uh, cargo shorts, some really cheap ass sneakers, and a fur lined trench coat. Okay. I ain't got no shirt. Dude, ain't nobody got time for that. So, for everyone at home, Jackson, from what I know, let let me just look at the description real quick. Okay, hold on. How about you not describe my character? <laughs> now, let me <laughs> let me just read this real quick. <laughs> Burgundy dark red, long sweeping curly luscious soft hair, a phoenix tattoo mm -hmm. in the middle of his back. A, a fang earring on his left ear and steel gray eyes and he's built like a fucking monster truck. Now, I'm gonna make this joke again because <laughs> it's... <laughs> My character's built like a monster truck but he has long, sweeping, curly, luscious soft Well, hair. he's not built like a mon... He's just super toned. He, he looks like he lifts... He lifts weights like all the time. He's he's strong, <laughs> dexterous, really well built. I would guess 
with all that, probably a handsome face on top of it. He is literally a werewolf character out of a fucking romance novel. <laughs> Just letting you know. And this werewolf is wearing cargo shorts, cheap sneakers, and a fucking fur-lined trench coat with no shirt. He looks like a complete weirdo. But... Hey. Like, a super, an incredibly, like, good-looking weirdo. It's just odd, but, okay. Like a weirdo. <laughs> as, as you're, I'm curious, you don't wear sunglasses or anything like that, do you? I probably don't own any, though. Okay. Um. I should probably look into getting some, though. The nice hat. <laughs> You're walking down a street and just kind of nearing, um, like a large road that go, how would I describe this? It's like almost the interstate roads that are like escalated high, like under bridges and stuff. Well, underneath one of those under bridges is like a maverick or maverick because you know, copyright and shit. I don't give a shit. Maverick. Yeah, Maverick. Um, 24-7. Let, let's, let's say Maverick 24-7. You, you see it in the distance. The red light's kind of shining. And you know, well, I could probably get some cigarettes and some alcohol from there. And as you're walking down the streets, someone walks out of an alleyway, a group. And as you go to kind of keep walking forward, a large hand, like almost the size of your chest, like right in the middle pushes you kind of backward where you going buster and before you stands probably six foot five six six super broad shoulders he almost looks like a football player big jaw large nose um wearing aviator glasses uh buzz cut hair um <laughs> Fucking massive Cuban cigar in his mouth that he's chewing on. Um, white tank top with a... With, like, really baggy jeans. But, he, like, you can tell they're, like, all designer. They're, like, really expensive. Um, and, and really... <laughs> and, like, really fancy shoes. Um, there's a few guys behind him. There's a really tall, quiet guy with black hair, suit, suit and tie. Um, you know what? Get rid of the tank top. He is going to be wearing a, a black suit. Let's, let's make him at least a little bit fancy. Um, there's one dude. He, he kind of looks like, if you could describe animals as people, he kind of looks like a hyena. He's got like a really stretched out face. Um... Super scraggly hair, fucking cackling behind him. Um, probably the weirdo of the group. Um, and then there's a really young kid, probably only like 19, 20, blonde hair, suit and tight, looks brand new, like he just got the day on the job with these guys. And he's really fucking shaky. Okay. The big dude, a hand in your chest, he looks back and he goes, Kyle, you want a new fur lined trench coat? Hang on, Angela. Yeah, no problem, man. Just, you know. I'll hang out here for a minute. So how are you guys today? Yeah. That's cool. Super awesome. That's cool, man. That's super dope. Yep. Dang. Cool. Alright, we're back. <clears throat> how you guys doing? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking keeping that in just so people can tell I'm fucking out of my mind. Okay. So, okay. Bi big man, built like a 
dam truck, like super big muscles. He is literally the bad guy off of like old mobster Disney shows. Super like broad shouldered, big square jaw, chewing on a cigar. So Kyle, it's your first day on the job. Don't you want a new fur line coat? I think it'd look good on you. Maybe we gotta clean it up a little. Hey, friendo, you wanna take that off for me? Give it to Kyle. Hey, friendo, let me remove the hand from my chest before I, you lose it and I give it to Kyle. Look at this guy, he's a jokester. You're outnumbered. Five to one, friend. Yeah, it might be an even fight. Oh, look at this guy. And he turns around and he looks back. He thinks he's Mr. Tough Guy. While he's turned around, I want to break his arm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. All right. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. Roll. Go ahead and roll. I just want to roll. Uh, go ahead and roll. Um, fucking, I don't know. Dex. Yeah, Dex plus brawl. That'll work. Okay. Shouldn't be laughing. Or roll that. Oh. 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 It doesn't do anything, does it? Okay, everybody at home. One success is a success. Two successes, it means you did kind of well. Three successes, you did really well. Four successes, you did really, really well. Jackson just rolled four successes on a human mortal. Yeah, he's a big dude. But as a werewolf with, like, super strength, I don't even need a roll. He doesn't even have enough break dice. <laughs> you grab... His arm. It, it takes both arms to do it. But you grab, like, right where the elbow is, tuck it downward, and just, with your left arm, push right on the elbow as hard as you can. And a sickening... And he falls to the ground. Oh, fucking son of a he's on bitch! The While he's on the ground, I'm taking his aviator glasses and putting them on. Um... The one hyena looking motherfucker grabs a baseball bat and charges at you and he goes, Yeah, yeah, fuck you, asshole! I've been looking for a fight all night! And <coughs> he's gonna swing at you. Uh, go ahead and roll Dex plus athletics, I think. Ignore the title. That's just already a made Dex athletics skill roll, so... Oh my god. <laughs> oh, oh no, no, that's that's got my weapon stuff on it, so Oh, I was like that is not even cool. Um <laughs> uh, okay, this is Dex Dex Athletics. Okay. You guys rolled evenly. I'm gonna say he he's gonna hit you, but just hear me out. Don't break the EV. <laughs> no, he swings at you and you put your left arm up and you're just re about dodging out of the way, but he hits you square on the forearm and the baseball bat cracks in half. And he just kind of looks at you for a moment. I'm going to slowly turn my head to him, give him a Cheshire grin, and I'm going to kick him back. Go ahead and roll kick. If he rolls all successes, he's going to get this. He... <laughs> he actually fucking botches it by rolling almost all ones. You kick him in where? The chest? Stomach, chest. Oh, no, no. Right. We'll, we'll go stomach. You kick him in the stomach. And... He... <sighs> Where do I even go with this? You kick him in the stomach so hard, you can see it ripple a little bit, and he pukes on the ground, and you can see blood kind of on his lips. <laughs> oh my god. 
And he just falls over. It's... You see the quiet guy look at Kyle? Kyle, now would be the time. You do something. And I'm going to turn to Kyle. And I'm, Kyle, now's the time where you run away. Uh, um, uh, what? I... <laughs> I'm going to step towards him and go, boo. <laughs> he runs off. He he runs off, and you can smell just... He probably pissed himself. Now it's just a silent guy. He looks at you. He winks at me? He just looks at you. I thought you said he winks at me. I was like, okay. <laughs> Whatever. Straight black hair. <clears throat> Comb neatly. Do I even want to try to fuck with you? You can try. It'll give me some entertainment. Or you can get your two friends here some help. Hmm. I really don't want to. I haven't been paid in fucking weeks. Hey, can you get his wallet out for me? I'm going to go... Ah, fucking... Do the boss. Go ahead and take it. I'm going to take schizos. He's going to walk over... Okay. Walk over okay. to the hyena dude, grab out his wallet, pick out the cash. <sighs> fucking group. Look, man, I gotta call the mob. Get him down here to fucking get our boss. Well, not boss. He's he's my boss. You know what? Go ahead and go do what you're gonna do. Just stay away from the alley for a little while. So, well, you don't either kill a whole bunch of dudes or I don't get my ass kicked. Wait about. 30 minutes tops, so. Alright, I'll keep that in mind. And he he just flicks on some black, really cheap sunglasses, looks down, super heavy sigh, flicks out his phone. Yeah. <laughs> Look, uh, we had a problem, and then you start walking away. After I grab the boss's wallet? Yeah. Like, oh! Sure. You also... Find a pack of super, super, super expensive Cuban cigars. Like, oh, fuck it. yeah. Fuck yeah. That shit, too. <clears throat> um, yeah, do, do you take his entire wallet with everything in it? Yes, I'm taking his whole wallet. Cool. Awesome. That's, that is so fucking awesome. You have no idea. Um, he would have had it on him in his suit, if you want to check... There's a 44 Magnum just tucked in there if you want it. Just fully loaded. Okay. There's no extra bullets. But yeah, pocket I'll it. I'll take it. I'll get my trench coat. Like uh, one of the inner pockets or something if there's one. All right. Yeah, no problem. You walk up to the gas Scared station. Three. Walk in. Um, girl with really straight black hair, super petite, probably kind of short um super thin rimmed glasses like i said long straight black hair she's reading oh yeah i really want to use this so for people who have who are in my vampire campaign at game club um you guys will know this character and i love reoccurring characters but um she is reading a romance novel behind the counter you can't tell immediately what it is but she's kind of she's so lost in the pages as you walk up she doesn't even notice you uh how close is she to the counter uh is she, like, leaning? yeah she's like leaning on the counter with the book like in her face yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna lean on the counter across from the book and put my finger on top of the book and kind of push it down a little bit. Oh my god! <clears throat> uh, it's hot. I'm gonna give her a cocky grin and kind of like lower the sunglasses down the bridge of my nose and like look at her over the sunglasses. Her face immediately goes red. There's a glint of something in her eyes, and <laughs> hi. 
and you see her finger, her left hand, like her fingers start to twirl in her hair. Hi, how are you doing? Good. Did you need something? She looks down, and in the description of her book, there, there's like, you, you see, it's it's a werewolf. It's a werewolf novel. <laughs> Full romance, too. Uh, Did you need something? Yeah, I was looking for some whiskey and probably some cigarettes. Um... (laughs) She looks down back at her book... you have it tilted down. Are you reading the pages? Are are you like saying? I what probably glanced at them. Yeah. You see, like a little a little subsection. It's like, like lonely nights watching TV. He's like sitting there, drinking some whiskey. He lights up a cigarette, like sweeps back his long hair. She's like looking at that for at least like twenty seconds before she looks up and she goes, "Uh, the the whiskey's in the back." I. I recommend uh, some of the more expensive stuff. The cheap shit's not really my thing. But, you know, it's just a recommendation. I don't know how often you drink. I'll keep that in mind. Hey, how about uh, you give me your information and we can get together sometime? She immediately, like, if she was read before, she is full <laughs> cherry red. Uh, I, me, uh, you're not me. And she looks behind her. Preferably, yeah. Unless you have another cute friend back there, is it? No, 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 no. And she kind of like whispers under her breath, "Rochelle is not fucking this up for me." <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> It's just me. And she kind of, like, grabs, like, the closest pen and bites down on it, looking at you. Like, the back of it. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, she, like, finds the closest, like, notepad, like, one of the schedule notepads. She's, like, starts flipping through it. Ups it out, writes down her name and, like, phone number and address. And she puts, like, something down. Like a little note, and then folds it up and like slides it across. Oh, I'm I I hate to ask why. I, just, you, me, why? Why not? You look like you could use some fun. <laughs> she. Offering. If you don't want to, that's fine. Uh, what? I dinner first and she kind of she doesn't even know, oh fuck I just said my mic she doesn't even know how to get out the words like should I ask dinner first should I she doesn't even know how to like get everything out if you'd like to get dinner first we can yes that would be nice I Look, you notice, like, a little bit, like, of drill is, like, on the right side of it. <laughs> Look, I'm going to be totally honest. I'm pretty sure any girl, or fucking guy for that matter, with some 11 out of 10 dude just walking up, like, dream boy, asking you on a date... I'm pretty sure I'm fucking dreaming right now. Am I dreaming? Is it gonna like slaps her face a little bit? I I wouldn't say you're dreaming, and I wouldn't slap your face. You would ruin such a pretty picture, such as yourself. Oh my god, I'm gonna faint. <laughs> How would you like me to prove that this is real and not a dream? I don't know. And she immediately, she like, she's speechless at this point. She doesn't know where to go with the conversation. She's flustered. 
Like, you can tell, like, she's trying to take away from, like, the main character, like, fill-in from the book. Like, how do I flirt? Like, I, she's just a, a little bit of a mess right now. <laughs> I'll have you know, I don't know how to flirt at all. <laughs> I'm just pulling this out of my ass. So. Not doing bad. I don't think I'm doing good either, but hey. If it works for a fictional character, I guess that's all I need, right? Just keep going. <clears throat> How about this? Same time next week. <coughs> when does your shift end? I I take late shifts. Um, I, I actually gotta go around like three, probably. It, it's midnight, right? And she kind of checks the clock, and it's like twelve fifteen, and she's like, "Yeah, about three o'clock." We can meet before your shift. Yes. I would you know, get, get some coffee or something. Or just hang out, you know. Yeah, sure. I I I'd love that. And like you you notice like her confidence is starting to kick in a little bit. So I'm going to go and get that whiskey. Okay. Sounds, sounds <laughs> good. So I need cigarettes, and I don't know what brand to get. Uh, so if you have a recommendation for those as well, it would be preferable. The, yeah, I, I gotcha. And she looks to the cigarettes behind her, and she's like, uh, uh, <laughs> and just, just picks one <laughs> off of the shelf. They're gonna be like some blue, t shiny outside with a hawk on him. <laughs> okay. <coughs> oh, I don't know how much this is gonna cost because I don't know how much money I got in this fucker's wallet. So. <laughs> okay, I gotta I gotta stop here for a second, like think. <clears throat> um. Oh, before I go back to get the whiskey and she turns around to get the cigarettes, I'm going to stand up fully and let my trench coat fall open a little bit. I fucking love that. Because, you know, why not? Um, stand up to my full six, six foot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm writing notes. Um, she, as you kind of stand up and like, oh, wait, yeah. After she turns around to get the cigarettes, I'm gonna stand up fully, and let my trench coat fall open a little bit. Oh wait, when she turns back around, she's <laughs> greeted with my body. <laughs> <laughs> my body. Um, she. Immediately, like, I had to say that creepily. Yeah, her Just... her jaw drops a little bit, like a little bit. I mean, her entire face goes blank for a moment, and you can tell like she's just in her head. Just, I'm gonna walk away to the whiskey, and grab a couple bottles. Okay, how many? I'm curious. Um, let's go with three. Why not? Oh, shit. All right. You buy three. <laughs> you put them on the counter, and she looks at you. Do you drink often? No. I I have a friend that does, though. I told, him, told her I'd buy some for her next time. I was close in town. You mention a her, and her face kind of falls for a moment. That That's understandable. Uh... Yeah, that's a lot of whiskey. Jesus. Um, She's uh, going through a rough patch. Figured I'd help help her through it a little bit. Family, friends, and all that. Uh huh. That's really kind of you. I try my best. Family problems, huh? It annoys her too, so you know, bonus for me. Cool. Family problems, huh? 
Fuck, I know my fair share of those. You know? If she ever needs a friend. I guess this is weird. I don't even know you, but... Let her know if she needs to talk to someone. I guess I'm here. <coughs> I can do that. She... She takes the money, puts the money in the cash register, kind of makes sure to, like, pull down her tight black t-shirt a little bit. Um, let, like, lets her, uh, what, what kind of ear, earring do I want? Man, I've been doing it for every single character for a while, so let's just do it for another, um, kind of sweeps back the hair behind her left ear and you can see a shiny silver uh, cross and she's like well I'll see you next week yeah do you want to meet up here or somewhere else oh uh, mm. let's uh, let's just meet here at Maybe we can go somewhere small to eat. And, well. <laughs> you see, like, she wants to keep going, and then she's just like, yeah, that'll be good. Somewhere small to eat and talk and get to know each other a little bit better. Yes, that would be fantastic. And then. Yes, I think it would. I'm curious, do you walk out at that point? <clears throat> Um, I'll ask for her name first. You son of a bitch. Uh, fucking damn it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you not have a name for her? No! <laughs> it's just the appearance! <laughs> damn it! <sighs> damn it. Uh,. Oh, if I do this, you're going to be mad at me, but we're going to go go with Blake. Blake? Yeah. We're going to go with Blake. Why would I be mad at you about that? I don't know. I'm not going to say where I got it from, but Blake. Um, I Shh, think I can... I, shut I up. Guess got be quiet. <laughs> Does her last name start with Bell? <laughs> Does she have a suspicious black bow on top of her head? Shut up, Jackson. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Um. As she's like, yeah, it, it's Blake. Ah, a beautiful name for such a beautiful woman. And then with that, I'm gonna like walk out okay with my shit. you start to walk out and the door you know usually behind like um the counter th there's usually a door sometimes to like a back office S a girl walks out super long blonde hair put in a ponytail a little bit taller um maybe 510 wearing a tight black t-shirt the, the formal wear of here um you can tell she, like, really doesn't give a shit wearing, like, um, let's say, like, some torn up jeans. Or, you know what? Actually, no. Blake has torn up jeans, and she kind of, like, is has the more punkish style to her, as you can see. Um, kind of shy. The girl with blonde hair that walks out, pristine, clean, and as she walks out, she turns around and she's like, Hey Blake, uh, yeah, we gotta get, it, and starts talking about work. Like we gotta get this, this, and this. Then, then she goes, "Oh my fucking god!" <laughs> and I'm gonna turn around and pull my sunglasses down, wink at her, and say, "No, but thanks for the compliment." And then continue walking. <laughs> you can hear Blake go, "Oh fuck." You can hear immediately as you walk out. You can hear just immediately as you walk out. Blake, like, talking to her. And with your heightened senses, she's like, Don't you dare fucking steal him. He's mine.
and you kind of hear under her breath, but she's like, but damn, wait, did he? And Blake is like, yes, surprisingly he did. And with that, as you walk away, you, you open the little thing with like her name and her information. And it's like, uh, what, what do I want to say? Um, it's probably just like a bunch of hearts and like a few stars and probably some cheesy quote like by can't wait to meet by next moonlight and like oh god like a <laughs> like you didn't see like as you went to walk off you left the note on the table so there's like um red lipstick and like the form of her lips on it <laughs> so you walked Wait, you back? I left it on the table yeah you, you left it there as you went to go grab your stuff that way I can retcon and do that um you start walking back you get to the den oh no there, there is something more interesting to happen you start walking back and as you start walking back you see three limousines of guys talking to the one silent dude and the silent dude's like look man I don't give a shit what you thought I saw but I'm telling the truth that dude kicked the shit out of schizo and fucking boss alright look fucking Cyrus got his ass beat one fucking kick dude and Bill he broke his fucking arm. One swing. Alright? Just one fucking pull. He broke his fucking arm. So I don't want to hear it. The other guys are like, What? Dude, whatever. Am I, am I walk, am I, I'm walking past at this point, right? Yeah, do you want to walk on the same road past them? Uh-huh. I, I want to walk past. And be like, I can give a demonstration if you want. Oh my god, dude. I told you to walk. <sighs> Fuck. This is your ass, not mine. One of the guys fucking looks towards you. You think you can fuck with the boss like that? He I starts... broke his arm. Oh, so you're just I saying it out loud. Yeah. Oh, I bet you fucking could. Let's go, tough guy. And he's going to walk towards you. He's going to pull out a knife and look at you. Watch this. I'll kick this fucker's ass. No time. I'll wait for him to make the first move. Okay. I'm not even going to look at the dice roll. Or I am. Three successes. And am I rolling dex athletics? Yes. <laughs> Is there anything you want to do specifically in this moment? Uh, I'm going to assume he just took a swipe at me and I dodged. Yep. You dodge. I want to grab his arm as I dodge and I break it. Go ahead and roll. Strength plus brawl. Or dexterity plus brawl. Okay. Oh, fuck. That's, that's worse than a botch. That's a critical. Like, that's easy critical fail. Um, He rolled two ones. No successes. Jackson rolled at least two successes breaking his arm and five successes dodging. Uh, you break his arm. It snaps. Um, you don't only break his arm by grabbing where his wrist is at. You tug and you can hear the wrist kind of pop out of place. The elbow the pop forward dislocate. and the shoulder dislocates and his head kind of falls on the concrete. You you kind of grab him by the head and he's like face pushed into the concrete. Everybody else at that point takes a step back. <laughs> I will then proceed to walk away. A man a man does start to walk towards you. Hold on, turn around, please. Turn around. Halfway. Uh, a man stands there 
Um, he's much like the kind of quiet guy, but instead he's a little bit more thin, but you can tell his mus muscle density is all tone muscle, almost like no fat. Um, on his side is a blue katana. His suit is white and he has blue, uh, like a blue tie, <coughs> spiky black hair, his... <coughs> He pulls down really thin black sunglasses that are pitch black, and he tilts them down, and you can see his eyes are a kind of grayish color, similar to yours, but a lot lighter. And he goes, have you ever thought of joining the mob? Thought about it. Once or twice. Well, not really my scene. Look, you did a good job. Let me put it this way. You ever need help with anything? The Batano family's got you, okay? It's a favor card for me personally. And he pulls out a card with a crown and a coin. Like the, like the coin is of a, like a three-pronged crown. And he's like, the Batano family is a very large family in L.A. But, uh, you know what? If you ever need me or my boys... You call on me, okay? Keep it in mind. You have a good night, mister. I don't think Jackson has a last name, so I'm just going to say Jackson. Jackson. Good night, mister Jackson. And he's going to go back to the limo, kick the dude on the floor, and he goes, Never fucking disrespect a family like that again. Let's go. <laughs> I'll be on my way. All right, and you start to make. And go, go ahead. Yeah. So you said that I forgot the paper back at the gas station. That the. Oh no no no! It, it was just like. Um, when you went to go grab the whiskey and came back, you grabbed it. Okay. Yeah. I thought you were saying like I didn't have it, so it's like no I no no. Go back and get it, fuck. Because <laughs> I need that shit. <laughs> Yeah, no, you, you got it. Okay, so I'm, I'll put that, like, those papers or whatever on, like, an inside pocket or something. Or the trench coat. Alrighty. So, you make it back to the den. And move in. You see Roxy, like, laid up against the wall, sleepy. She kind of looks, ugh. Oh. Jackson, you can tell she has cold sweats and her eyes are kind of red. Oh, shit. You look like shit. Yeah, thanks, smartass. So I got two, do two options. I got some Cuban cigars off some punk-ass bitch. Or some... I don't even know what, how, what quality the cigarettes are, so... <laughs> They're they're good quality. They're not bad. She made sure to get you the good ones. Or some decent quality cigarettes. Ah, oh, fuck, Hawks! Jesus Christ! I haven't one of those. Haven't had one of those in forever. And did you, did you just say Cuban cigars? Where the fuck did you even get those? I was headed toward the gas station. Got jumped by some goons from this fucking mob gang or some shit kicked the shit out of a couple of them one of them ran off scared pissing in himself the other one's like hey take his wallet and so i took his wallet and his cigars oh my fucking god that is the greatest thing i think i've heard all week wait you wait said... wait till you hear this part wait hold on hold on do you know you said the mob do you know a family uh what was the family name again <laughs> the the batano the Batano. Oh my fucking god! Wait, hold on. Do you even remember the guy's name? Nope. I think his name is Bill. Bill Batano. Oh my god, that. <laughs> she just starts fucking laughing. Yeah. Oh my god. Just walking by an alley, all of a sudden, his big fat meaty hand was on my chest, pushed me back a little bit. That's the greatest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Oh my god. 
it, you, you need to hear this next part, though. Yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I got to that. I got to the gas station, right? Yeah. Pretty little cashier late girl. Uh, I don't know how old she was. Okay. Behind the counter. She's just minding her own business, reading her uh, cliche romance werewolf books. Wow, that's fucking on and point. Just didn't even notice I walked in, walked right up to her. Leaned on the counter and kind of like pulled the book down a little didn't. bit. Looked at looked at her over these fancy new glasses that I got from Bill because you know why not? And she just freaking started stammering and blushing. Glanced at the page, almost like a perfect description of me. <laughs> oh my, Jackson, you naughty dog. So you know I had to mess with her a little bit. How bad? What did you do? Uh, I don't remember exactly what I did, so I'm just gonna say I explained it to her. She just starts <laughs> laughing her ass off. Oh my god! So you I'm beat her? Gonna pull out. Oh, I'm you... gonna pull out the note that she wrote or whatever that Blake wrote and <laughs> show it to her. Ooh, damn. You gotta tell me how that next night goes. Like, seriously. You should have seen her face when I asked if I, I that I, when I asked for whiskey and cigarettes, she immediately went back to looking at the book for like fucking 30, 40 seconds, just staring at this one part, describing how the character who looks like me, somewhat, not exactly. Anyway, he's pretty much all by himself, drinking whiskey, smoking cigarettes. <laughs> Her face was fucking priceless. Oh my fucking god. Ugh. That's... What a fucking night. Literally just to go grab some cigarettes and some damn whiskey. What the f... How did you... I don't even want to ask. I, I do want to ask. What the fuck? I... I had some fun. I can tell you had some fun. Jesus Christ. Christ, Jackson. And I brought more fun back and show her the whiskey and the c cigarettes and shit and just be like, I got the good shit. She immediately <laughs> opens the whiskey, smells it. Oh, that's the good shit. Give me a fucking cigarette. And she puts her hand out. <laughs> I'm gonna hand her the cart and what she can do with it. And she puts one in, takes a long inhale, lets it out. Oh. This is life. This is how life should be. And she just kind of nods Company, her head. Good booze. Good cigarettes. You know, Jackson, I think you're the best fucking werewolf in this fucking pack. At least in my opinion. Well, don't go find a mirror, because you'll ruin your opinion. Oh, Stop. And she takes a really, really big slug of whiskey. I'm gonna grab the carton of cigarettes. I'll fucking smoke them. Fuck it, why not? She kind of looks towards you and she goes, You don't want to be making your, uh, your gas station girlfriend all jealous now. But she won't know. Won't hurt. Uh, nobody likes a grungy dog like me, anyways. If you say so. I do fucking say so. And she takes a rock and throws it at the wall. Well, let's just uh, agree to disagree. Uh, bullshit. <sighs> you know, Aiden? Uh, fuck, Aiden. Jesus Christ. It's because I'm looking at the oh, thing. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's, hold on. So, everybody at home, the what you guys see, I, I'm always looking up at the left-hand corner of my screen, which is Aiden first, and then Jackson. And I always mix them up because it's really hard not to. So, I seen Aiden first. No, she meant Jackson. She said, ain't, I'm walking out. 
<laughs> yeah, no, she said Jackson. I, I promise you. Um, <coughs> you know, Jackson, I've been fucked over by a lot of people. Like, a lot of people in my life. Sorry to hear that. I just... It's nice when you're fighting and somebody's got your back. Because this isn't my first pack. They got me from another pack. And those bastards left me for dead. At least twice. Wouldn't something new every day. Yeah. And she takes a really big sip. You notice her eyes getting a little bit red. She's like... You know... It's really funny. One of... One of, one of those guys in the pack. He was all like... Oh, you know, you're so pretty. You're so good looking. You're so great. I fucking shrugged him off for a lot of the time. I didn't like him. I didn't care about him. I was doing my own thing. But, you know, he was that young pup who who was with me and, like, we fought together. And he, he looked like this big hero after a while. And then that second fucking time he left me. And after, I don't know, being shot, almost being killed, crawling back to the den with our entire pack, was being treated like a fucking king, like some Viking warrior who was such a badass. What happened to don't leave anybody behind and you're the prettiest girl and there he is. Fucking, I don't even remember her name. What does it even fucking matter? I don't care. And she takes a really big sip. Well, I can't speak from knowing the guy, but he had at least a couple things right. And what would that be, Mr. Jackson? You're really pretty, and I don't leave comrades behind. Uh, you proved that second one right. Stop saying that. You're going to fucking make me cry. Stop saying what? That I won't leave you behind or that you're pretty? Fuck you. <laughs> and she starts crying. Like, it's small tears. If I'm sitting right next to her, I'm going to throw my arm over her shoulders and kind of, like, hug her to my side. She's going to just start crying, like, fully at this point. And I think about an hour and ten minutes in, this is where our interlude, where our interlude will cut. The journey of getting cigarettes... And alcohol. Heading on a gas station chick that I had no plans on going anywhere with her. <laughs> We're in it now, buddy. So, Werewolf has officially become the emotional, bloody, gory, fucking mess of trying to get uh, an entire family back together. And then it has also become raunchy... I, where do I even go with this? Raunchy relationship simulator for Jackson? <laughs> like. <laughs> Werewolf, the raunchy simulator for Jackson. <laughs> well, let me just put it this way. For Jackson, Jackson is going to have a fucking harem by the end of the series. And no one's going to fucking hey, stop Jackson's him. not going to be complaining. Yeah, I know. Because, like. 
Oh, I can't fucking wait. Like, I don't know if I want drama or if I want that. We'll see, though. We will see. Why can't we have both? Mix it up. Ooh. Best of both worlds. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, everybody. About the whole harem part. I mean, I'm fine with, like, <laughs> one person. Which I was thinking was just going to be Roxy. I was messing with the lady at the gas station. Oof. You're hurting people's feelings. Because, one, I look like a text be- textbook fucking werewolf romance novel character. That's true. And she's reading it, so it was like, fuck it, let's fucking mess with her. Ooh, next week is going to be lovely. So, oh, I have a note that I need to write down. Pen open. Hold on. I never gave her a last name. Blake or Roxy? Blake. Let me put it this way, audience. Blake said she had some family problems. (laughs) Everyone has dark secrets. Alrighty, everybody, that will be Werewolf the Apocalypse Extinction. Bye bye.